Yes, guys, we're still giving away 2000 XRP. And if you want to enter into this insane giveaway, all you have to do is make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed, and make sure you comment something down below. That is it. You're automatically entered. Now, let's get over into the video of today. First off, Ripple's top executive says transnational payments about to transform while Ripple intends to set up new audio corridors. So yes, that sounds pretty damn amazing, pretty damn good. Ripple has been expanding for a very long time. We all know about it. But as per website, Ripple's top executive, Marcus Treacher, has recently stated that despite being highly fragmented, the global market of transnational payments is on the verge of a transformation. He believes that the power of ISO standardization and RippleNet will transform it, making money move as easily as information does now. Yeah, I, I believe the idea and the essence is actually really plain Jane and really obvious, where it's like, right now, it's so, so, so difficult to move money around the world. There's just way too much friction and it costs way too much money. It's something that really does not fit with our modern world where, you know, spending information or really uh, sending and receiving information over the world is nearly instantaneous. However, when we're talking about payments, all of a sudden there's just too much friction to work properly. That's, that's kind of strange, right? Because really payments are also mostly just pieces and bits of information uh, if, if you look at it from, a, I guess, a different perspective. So really there, the big question is, how can this be fixed? And a lot of us are thinking that Ripple uh, or the ISO standard, or really kind of a mixture of that, is going to be a little bit of a of a fix for the whole system. And of course, whenever you're talking about that, we associate that with the XRP as well. Now, Marcus Treacher, Ripple's senior vice president of customer success, believes that at the present stage, the global market of cross-border payments is very much fragmented. However, ISO standardization and the way RippleNet is tackling the issue with innovations is helping to redefine transnational payments. What blockchain and virtual assets like XRP are offering, Treacher said, can potentially develop into a payment solution better than everything on the market today. He also stated that Ripple intends to remove friction from international payments and make cash move around the world as easily as information does at present. Cooperating with banks and payment operators is moving society closer to that goal. And besides, Treacher added that RippleNet uses the ISO 20022. Uh, he missed an O right there. It's ISO 20022, whatever. Standard, which also helps improve the situation. And yeah, we also know about, we know about most of this stuff already, but it's just to remind everybody what's going on, what some of the executives are saying, and really what the general idea is and why we are so, uh, I guess, happy to be holding this. I told you guys, we're still very freaking early. Right now, a couple of the corridors are being set up, but think about this one. For some people, adopting Ripple and some, some bigger companies, it's going to be so obvious uh, and, and, and just normal that they have every single corridor. But we are right now here at a point where they're building up these corridors, where they're building up the rails, and it's basically like a, a big railway company. That's how I like to think about it. Right now, we're just setting the tracks, right? Eventually, all railways will be like, or all, like, all, all train companies will be like, yeah, you know, th those rails have been built ages ago. It's just, it's been there, you know, we just have to build trains. But we were here when the steel was set in place, guys, when all the rails were being laid down. And that's what these corridors really are. They're the payment rails anyway. So, yeah, pretty damn amazing. Price surges push Polkadot and BNB up to the top 10 rankings. BNB and Polkadot are now the 5th and 6th largest crypto by market cap, edging out Chainlink and Bitcoin Cash. So yes, looking at live coin watch, it is looking pretty damn disturbing, guys. Polkadot at the fifth largest and BNB at the sixth. This was actually the other way around a little bit earlier today, but still, it is looking very disturbing to look at. I mean, Bitcoin Cash and Chainlink have been in that top for so long uh, already. I mean, Bitcoin Cash especially, that it's really kind of strange. And Bitcoin SV is all the way out of the top 10 even, 
with Monaco coin also coming in hot here or crypto.com I mean uh, at the ninth spot right now doing pretty damn insane and I'm, I'm seeing a pretty big revamp of the crypto top 10 I mean this this week here this last month it has done it's it has done a lot and that's also another sign another I guess piece of confirmation that the top 10 at any point can change but XRP still remains the top guys pretty damn amazing if you think about it all right then I saw something Mighty Duck, or one of the Mighty Duck's kids, is now a crypto billionaire who is running for U.S. president. So, that's, um, <laughs> that's pretty odd. <laughs> that's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. So, hold on to your hats, pals. This is a ride. A former child actor who counts the Mighty Ducks among his acting credits just so happens to now be a crypto billionaire who also just happens to be running a very legitimately campaign for U.S. president. And that, realistically, is only the very start of the story. Now, even though I don't want to go over the whole story here of Brock Pierce, I did find it pretty interesting that there will be more and more crypto guys looking to get themselves top positions in this world. And really, piece by piece, as we've already been seeing, more crypto progressive guys or, or crypto adopters or maybe even ripple executives and ripple guys will take these top spots in the government and eventually a most likely positive regulatory framework will come out and that will partially be to ripples talks with these governments and legislators and regulators but also partially because of really a lot of these guys just getting more adopted and, 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 and normalized or whatever you say that right there with crypto really right now it's looking really foreign and it's just kind of strange and you know fake and all of that stuff scams but piece by piece they'll get more into it and they'll also notice that what they got right now all right what, what crypto got right now is the juice and they want it but it, it just takes some time and understand that as well Switzerland introduces new laws for digital sector or digital currency sector. Just guys, understand this, all right? We're talking about U.S. regulations all the time and, and what they're doing for crypto. Switzerland and a couple of other countries are already so hard at work to, to build it up. And really, Switzerland is, is really a pioneer in that, in, that, in that regard. They're building so ridiculously hard. It's, it's, it's going completely insane. I'm, I'm really wondering... What's going on in Switzerland and how they're so fast with all this stuff? But really, the U.S. is very often at the top of the game with all this, you know, innovative type of stuff. Because, well, if you're number one, you don't have to look for keeping up with the, the rest. You got to look for innovations, which the rest of the world will keep up with. But right now, they're not winning the crypto race, which is kind of strange. And I'm, I'm still wondering if they'll roll out of CBDC first or something along those lines. But as of this point, the U.S. is really far behind. Tether is now moving 1 billion more USDT coins from Tron to Ethereum blockchain. Stablecoin issuer Tether is set to move a billion more USDT coins, or around 7% of its total supply, from Tron to Ethereum. The swap will be performed in two tranches tomorrow, September 15th. Tether said it would coordinate with a third party, an unnamed crypto exchange, for the swap. Quote, a tier 1 exchange asked to swap. Tether CTO Paulo Ardoino told the block. Stablecoin chain swaps are generally performed when users demand to trade on one blockchain instead of another. Issuers and exchanges usually don't make such decisions themselves. This would be the second massive swap of Tether from Tron Ethereum. Last month, the issuer moved 1 billion coins as well. I, I think this whole Tether situation is just stupid once more. I've talked to you guys very often about why I think Tether is really just a dumb coin to support. Uh, and I'm sticking by that. I really don't know why people think Tether is something good. Unless they publish or public, publicize all the numbers. Yeah, until that's a fact, I'm, I'm staying away as far as I can from Tether. If I can. Because I don't trust it. Um, but if you have to use it intermediate for intermediary good, completely fine. Can you hold it for the next three months or so? Completely fine, in my opinion. But do I want it as a long term thing? Do I trust Tether? No. All right. But again, I do have maybe a couple hundred bucks in Tether all the time to just quickly swap um, every so often. I, I do use it. However, 
I don't trust it too much. The same for F Spark from Flare. As you guys know, I, I don't like what they're doing with the supply. However, it, it is kind of useful and it's free money. So I'll most likely be using it and um, be receiving it. I still don't trust it though. Yield farming DeFi token are all going to zero warrants crypto will. Well, yeah, you should be warned that a lot of these DeFi projects can go to zero as most of them are just BS made for some quick money. And funny enough, the, the, the project developers know about it. Look at how they named their stuff, right? Sushi, hot dog, pizza, bread, cream, yam, cereal, burger. <sighs> you, you can't take yourself too serious with names like that, in my opinion. Most of them will go to zero because people are dumb, right? People will buy into it not knowing what it is and they'll most likely lose their money, which will ultimately fail projects very often. And last but not least, actually a pretty damn important article, uh, but I already shared it in the Telegram chat. By the way, make sure you check that out. Apple forces Coinbase to change its crypto products, says CEO. Brian Armstrong has taken Apple to task over its allegedly exclusionary policies towards crypto app developers and yeah the, the the bad or i guess the good part is this only applies to the app the bad part is i think a lot of people use that app and it does have quite a little bit of an influence but brian armstrong the ceo of coinbase posted this on twitter why would apple want to prevent people from earning money during a recession they seem to not be okay with it if it uses crypto then they they're not okay I'm not sure why this is why our Coinbase Earn product does or what. We sometimes end up in a bizarre negotiation with them, modifying the product and asking users to jump through hoops, do a task on mobile, then move to the web to claim your reward to comply with our guidelines. This creates a worse experience for Apple and Coinbase customers because basically you got to think about it this way, right? Apple does not want a lot of things on their app store or in their apps or in their apps that they have on, uh, on iPhone. Partially because they want to keep everything, you know, safe for everybody, which is good. And partially because they just don't want people to be involved with sketchy things or things that could ever get to, you know, a lawsuit for them. But also because they don't want to be associated slash um, lose grip over things, right? They want to have everything in their control and make as much money as they can. And they just don't want things in their apps to be bad or, or scammy or things like that. At least that they, they try to do it as, as much as possible, especially for these bigger developers. What happens, though, is that a lot of these projects and a lot of these um, apps, they have to make it so you have to click something within the app, then get redirected or sent to a website, and then you perform a couple of actions and then go back to the app. And... I don't know if you guys have ever had to do that, but nobody likes it, all right? It's very freaking annoying to have to go to a website instead of just being able to do everything within the app. And yes, it does create a worse customer experience, and really, I don't think it's it's good, but it's to comply with Apple's stupid rules. And that's, again, something I'm wondering here. Why can't crypto just be fully, you know, fine for these, these, these um, app stores, and especially for Apple, if... I mean, the company is so big and they're legitimate, so no scam. Like, I mean, Coinbase is a multi-billion dollar company. I don't think they're really scamming people that way. I don't think they could get away with it that easily. So, you know, I, I trust them pretty much in that sense. So why do things like this, right? I, I, don't, I don't really know. Here he's talking about it a little bit more. Forcing users to use the App Store instead of DApps, websites, or IAP instead of crypto payments. Reminds me of what Microsoft did back in the day, forcing users to use Internet Explorer if you are on Windows, which led to their antitrust issues. Apple, it's time to stop stifling innovation in crypto. We would like to work with you productively on this. Someday, crypto could even be integrated into a or IAP to give people in emerging markets better access to the financial system globally. He has a very good point. However, I, I don't think Apple is going to reply nicely to that at all because um yeah we we saw with um what was it i think fortnite that sued them or epic games or something like that for their for their big issue i believe it was fortnite right and if fortnite can't get their stuff done then a company that's you know 10 times smaller coinbase here probably won't get their stuff done either even though they're in completely different sectors 
I would say that Epic Games probably knows quite a lot about apps and, and things like that. So they, they are also working together with a couple of other companies to sue Apple and to, to get things fixed. If they can get it done, there's a good chance for Coinbase. Otherwise, it's just a, a, a very good question, but probably no result at all. But guys, that was it for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video. And also let me know what you think about Apple. Do you use Apple products? This is not financial advice, by the way. None of this video was. It's just for, for fun, for entertainment and things like that. But um, take care, everybody, and have a very nice day.